Now let's talk about tactical business analysis. Remember, tactical business analysis is where you have a project defined, and now you try to go out and try to get the nitty gritty details about what the project is going to do, what the application is going to do, what the people with, uh, are going to be doing with the application, and things like that. This is where you're going to be talking to a thundering herd of stakeholders, and you need to figure out who are all of the people that are going to be involved in the project, and what do you need to ask them in order to get their requirements. This is the core work that most people who have the title business analyst or junior business analyst actually start with. You're really looking at the project and you're trying to assess the time, money, value per, uh, perspectives so that there is a balance of the resources required, the money that's invested, and the value that the company is going to be getting out of it. Your job now is to do hardcore analysis. If you were thinking about the Kinefin framework, this is where things in the complicated domain really fit well because you can do analysis, you can break things apart, look at the details, and out of the details figure out what is it exactly that we need to do in order to satisfy the customer. And of course, this is where we deal with change. In the tactical business analysis level, change is rampant, and that's why we have philosophies such as Agile and Lean and methodologies like Kanban and Scrum in order to deal with ongoing change throughout the project. The outcome out of tactical business analysis is going to be stakeholder requirements if you're in a conventional project, or features and or user stories if you're in a lean or agile project. Fundamentally, given today's technology, we'd maintain that user stories are a phenomenal tool, or a phenomenal structure for expressing stakeholder requirements regardless of what philosophy you're following, whether it's waterfall, agile, or lean. I think because the user story gives you the who, the what, and the why answers very early on, they're a phenomenal tool for analyzing or for looking at and expressing stakeholder requirements at any level of detail. So what kind of techniques do we use in tactical business analysis? Well, our old friend problem analysis is still there. This time, however, we're looking at it at a lower level of detail, looking at individual problems as opposed to the problems that affect the entire organization. And when you start talking to the people in the trenches, people doing the real work, you're going to find a lot of problems that the uh, higher levels had not thought about, didn't identify as problems because they are not involved with them at that level. You're also going to be using things like process modeling and analysis. You're going to draw pictures, you're going to draw diagrams of how the business process works, how the flow is, how you get from A to B, and what information is exchanged between the individual steps of the process. Interviews and workshops, or in the world of Agile, conversations. These are all three methods for interacting with the real people, doing the real work, and trying to get an understanding of what would help them do their job better, faster, cheaper. Data modeling and analysis. This is a technique for looking at the structure of data. And although it came out of the 70s and the 80s when we were talking about building huge databases, in the world of big data, this has taken a revival. This has become very important once again, because trying to figure out what kind of information you want on a dashboard, or how the information that you have coming out of 10 different sources is structured. What are the elements that, they, that are common, even though they might have different names and different descriptions in each of the different sources. So data modeling, business data modeling especially, and data analysis are key in, to, in today's world where we're talking much more about business analytics or data analytics in order to figure out where the organization is going. Decision tables or decision trees are two techniques for getting at the lowest level of detail a better understanding of how the organization works, of how the individuals within the organization do what they need to do in order to get their job done. If you start off with a decision table or decision tree, you'll find that it guides the presentation or it guides the conversation all by itself. It forces you to ask specific questions about specific conditions and the outcomes of each combination of conditions. Your obviously requirements, your features, your user story decompositions are very key at this level of detail. The word decomposition always means tearing something apart. So if you're looking at a user story and you're decomposing it, you're trying to find what are the different components that the application would have to have, what are the different actions that people would have to do in order for that user story to be appropriately implemented. Getting back to the ATDD or acceptance test-driven design and BDD, business-driven design, uh, your test strategy, your test plan, if you are following a true agile approach in an organization, or even if you're following just a waterfall approach, I highly recommend looking at acceptance test-driven development because the scenario where if I give the developers 
the test that their program has to pass, as opposed to giving them some vague user story or a vague solution requirement, the developers are much more likely to deliver the content that I need. They're going to deliver the program that will pass the test. It is a step that has greatly improved our ability to deliver working software cheaply and quickly to the business community, and it does what the business community wants it to do. Now, there are a thundering herd more tools and techniques that you might be using in your tactical business analysis. Anything that you could think of at this point in time, write it down, keep a track of it. You might bring it up in the discussion board and see what other techniques other people are using. Share your techniques and see if they will share theirs so you can build a better repertoire of tools and techniques at your disposal in order to come up with a good set of techniques for doing tactical business analysis. So who are the players involved in tactical business analysis? Well, at this level, the common drivers of the process are the directors, managers, product managers, product owners, uh, the people who have decision-making authority within the organization kind of at the level that is operational, meaning they are able to decide things that are going to be happening that are going to have a direct impact on the people who are doing the real jobs. You might also be involved with a business analysis center of excellence if you have one, or that same organization, that type of an organization where you have a pool of trained business analysts at disposal for any different project under any other name would be exactly the same. People that are executing tactical business analysis are going to be business analysts at all levels and under any other name. Also going to be product managers, project leaders, project managers, subject matter experts. Your product owners on an agile team will definitely be involved in this as well as agile team members. In agile implementations, what a lot of organizations have gone to is having what is called a customer side team, which is going to be people that are trying to keep ahead of the agile developers by taking a look at the user stories that are coming up in the next scrum in order to, excuse me, in the next sprint in order to be able to make sure that they are ready for the developers and the developers aren't sitting around twiddling their thumbs with nothing to do. There's a lot of different people that might be involved in tactical business analysis.